everybody. I don't know if anybody's even on yet. I'm just going to kind of chill for a minute and maybe say some stuff. I don't know. I'm kind of excited. This is the first time I've done any kind of streaming in a while. Um, probably since about the time that I first started working on this. So, yeah, it's uh, been almost three years since I started this project, the first Blender file for this helmet. It was back when the classic Mando helmet was still in version 4. Um, so yeah, almost three years ago, June of 2019 is when I started this helmet. and uh, It's come a long way. I thought I would be able to finish it a lot sooner, but uh, we got busy. <laughs> Which, hey, I'm not complaining, but uh, finally he's like, I gotta get this thing done. So, because uh, it's just been a personal project, something that I've wanted to make, something I've wanted to see and have. And uh, I think my skills were up to it. I think there was a reason why it took so long. I don't think I was actually ready to build this helmet two and a half years ago. I think that uh, I needed to grow as a model builder and as a 3D printer. And also, uh, you know, get some skills with resin printing because that's kind of a whole new thing, but I love it. It's it's amazing the detail that you can get. By the way, all of these parts that are kind of a cool gray, kind of different from the main helmet, those are all resin printed, that is the raw resin. And I really love it because you can get so much detail into these parts. I don't even think I've scratched the surface yet with how much detail you can get, but like this little guy in the back here, this little detail piece, that's all resin. So we do have a few people with us, and I want to thank King Kimosabi for buying the badge. Hello, King Kimosabi. Thanks for being here. Pirate Monkey says it looks good. Welcome addition to the field of amazing helmets. Hello, Pirate Monkey. Thanks for joining us. So yeah, I guess um, I'm going to talk about this guy for a little bit. I'll probably start disassembling it. So, so a lot of people ask me, did the rangefinder move? Yes, the rangefinder moves. Uh, this is a prototype. This is the second prototype that I built. There's actually another one here. If I can get it out. This is the first prototype. And it's freaking heavy. Because all of these parts are glued on. On this helmet, everything's integrated into the main body of the helmet, except for the detail pieces, obviously. But this was the first prototype. I'm keeping that one. But yes, the rangefinder does move. Um, this one is a prototype though, so it's got some a little bit of kit bashing, a little bit of tweaking and fine tuning. Things that you know you don't discover until you actually finally start putting it together. And uh, you know, getting a sense of what you're dealing with. So, um, yeah, so the rangefinder is uh, magnetically attached. I'm going to go ahead and stop the rotation for a moment. So I can kind of pull some things off here. So this is our rangefinder. It's a stem. It's reinforced with brass tubing, cut to fit. It's magnetically attached. And uh, just like on the classic Mando, this part comes off, and uh, this thing opens up. Let me actually grab a tool here to help out with this. It's nice having my tools handy. So this little part comes out, and you can see it's all hollow in there, so you can backlight your screen. If you don't like the screen that's in there, then you can just slide it out and put something else in there. So, I'm going to put this one back, kind of put it back together. See, this is, this is what you discover when you make a prototype, is this screen did not fit quite the way I thought it would, so I had to make some mods to it. Now it fits good. The final production version will definitely be a lot better. So, yeah, let's stick this back on. Put this back on. 
And one of the things that I'm going to be doing with the production version of this helmet is making it so you can have the rangefinder on the left side if you want. Hell, you could even have a rangefinder on both sides. I think that might look a little goofy, but maybe you got something different over here that moves, but you got this over here, so who knows. Um, another thing that we're getting asked a lot is will this helmet be available as an STL? Well, no, it'll be available as several STLs. <laughs> and it's going to come in two flavors. So we're going to offer this version, which is the production version, and I'll be offering a hardware kit. So if you want all the screws and threaded inserts and magnets and brass tubing and stuff that is required to put this together, this version, then you can get all that for a lot less than it would cost you to go out and harvest it off of Amazon or eBay or whatever. Left side rangefinder, very popular in the comments. <laughs> cool. So yeah, right now these ears are not mirrors of each other. This ear is a little different than the, the right ear, but in the final version, the production version, they will be mirrors of each other so the rangefinder can... Actually, this stem could go over here and then the only thing you'd need different would be the viewer. So anyway, let's see. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this right here. Um, I am waiting for a buoyancy compensation device purge hose, okay? It's a flexible piece of rubber tubing that's corrugated, and uh, if I got the right one, it's going to be very flexible. There is going to be a uh, life support chest box for the, that goes with this helmet uh, that is going to be coming very soon. So you'll be able to integrate that into your integrate that into your, uh, hold on a second, oh, that's better, oh man, it's having a little bit of a hard time breathing, I forgot how hard it is to have all this stuff on for, for any length of time, <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, and there's going to be a coupler that allows you to connect a hose to this, so it'll be this plus another coupler, then the hose going into the life support box that gets warm on the front of your flight gear. So let's see, what else do we want to mention? Ah, the blast shield, yes. Uh, blast shield seems to be very popular, so let's pull the shroud off. Yes, let's see it. So we can see what's under the hood. Okay. So the blast shield is basically controlled right now by these little side tabs. It doesn't move very much, just enough to get up under the shroud and then over the top of your T-visor when it's down. So, And you can see through it when it's down, so if you wanted to walk around with it down, that would not be a problem. But uh, yeah, and then uh, it's... Uh, how it works on the side. What's that? Show them how it works on the side. Yeah, that's what I was just doing. You mean this? The little tabs? Yeah, it's got these little tabs on the side. Um, we're going to be making uh, a little thing that clips over the top of these. Right now, these are designed the way they are so that they can be printed flat on the print bed with the print lines moving parallel to the length of the part. That provides the strongest part that you can get on an FDM machine rather than printing it straight up where it's basically a very stylized stack of pancakes. So, let's see, okay. What else do we got here that we can talk about? These little vent covers are so perfectly fit, I, I can't believe how I did it, but somehow I managed to get these so perfectly fit that they, they just pop in. You don't even have to glue them. They will stay put. You can get them out from the inside of the helmet and you can push them out but it takes a little bit of effort, so they're not going to drop out of there, but the nice thing is, is you don't have to glue them in if you don't want to. Let's go ahead and put this back. So, I made an extensive list of things that I needed to adjust and tweak 
for the final production version. And I got all those done today. So the goal is to see about getting this thing uh, up into the shop possibly tomorrow and I would say Wednesday at the latest as a make and by the end of the week as an STL file because it's not just putting the files up I have to create basically an instruction booklet for how this thing goes together it, you know it seems like it might be simple but there's actually a lot of little nuances um, you know what takes magnets what size magnets does it take what size screw do you need where um, how to install your threaded inserts uh, lots of little details like that so I'm going to make an instruction booklet for it for this version and for the simpler version uh, which will be a lot less complicated but it'll still you know maybe have a couple of screws or something that are required so uh, our mall DeLorean friend she says it doesn't look simple tell them how many parts it has uh, currently it's sitting at about 35 parts many of which are resin printed I mean this thing alone this top piece right here is three pieces this is one and that's not even including the hardware that's just the printed parts um, the left ear has three pieces the right ear has three pieces uh, then there's the two what I call the collar vents because it's kind of like a collar so these are the vents in the collar uh, these things are two piece this one's going to get a third piece there's a piece that goes up front here that's not currently glued in. Uh, it's kind of like a trim piece for the um, for the T-visor. And I, I, I actually did this. I'm going to ask you guys your opinion. So on the prototype, that little piece is straight. Okay? And I didn't notice this until I printed the second one. But um, this one I did angled. So... I'm thinking about offering both of them, you know, in the digital file. So you will have your choice if, you know, you want to use the straight. See, this has got an angle in it right here. And this oh. one, this one here at the bottom is straight. I don't know if you can see that. But um, let me know what you think. I actually like both of them. They, they just have their own, each have their own character. So, um, yeah, oh, the blast shield. Let's go back to the blast shield. So, the blast shield's a little tricky to install, but once you know how to do it, it's, it's not really that bad at all. It's actually pretty easy. So, I'm going to take this off again so we can kind of just really quickly look at that. Um, let's see here. Let's take this off like that. And set this right here. Okay, so, blast shield is basically just sitting right on these stems here. Tilted Cobalt said that the chevron cut ties it together and thank you for the badge. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I agree. But I do like the straight one too. I, I agree what you said about the chevron one. I, I totally think that's right on. And King Kimosabi likes both. He likes options. So yes, we should cool. include both. I like options too. Yes. That's why I make them. <laughs> You know, they're fun. Options are fun. Makes it more interesting. And then you can really kind of customize a lot more instead of having exactly the same helmet as everybody else. So, let's see. What was I going to show you? Okay, so yeah, you can see the blast shield just comes off. These little stems here, they actually go underneath the ear base, which we can't expose right now because this center piece is being held on with screws. This piece is going to be magnetic. It currently doesn't have a magnet in it yet. Um, but uh, the the axle and the stem get installed inside the ear plate where where it mates with the helmet. And then you put that on, tighten your screws down, and you're good to go. Um, and you can install it before or after the shroud mounts. Um, I've done both in the last couple of days uh, over the course of getting this thing dialed in. So either one will work. I think maybe putting them in before you do this might be easier, but I don't know. They weren't. It wasn't really that hard. It's just you know it's like a lot of things. There's a trick to it. Once you know the trick, 
it's not really that big a deal. Oh, hello to Argentina. Argentina. Hello, Argentina. Hello, Deste. All right. Oh, I didn't put the uh, I didn't put the blast shield back on. So yeah, putting the blast shield on that would be the last thing you do once you once you have the stems in. Then you just go ahead and there's some little holes on the end here, and uh, you just kind of slide it in. And you want to take it to where it's just about touching the shroud mount just like that and that way it'll be sitting where it needs to sit to be able to move underneath the shroud and over the helmet and then finish it off by putting the shroud back on this little guy goes on the bottom oh by the way this thing here I'm going to hollow this out and make it so you can put a little, you know, pre-wired tea light or something in there, you know, so you can light those up. So that's that's going to be a feature also. Okay. There we go. And we're in. So there's a magnet up here, uh, a 15 by 3 millimeter magnet, two of them actually, one in the shroud and one in the helmet. That's your main holding point. Then there's some registration tabs up here on either side and then uh, some 10 by 2 millimeter magnets holding it in here. So let's see. What else can we say about this thing? The back vent. Oh yeah, the back vent. The back vent is uh, was a challenge. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to print it. Uh, I was definitely not able to print it with FTM, but amazingly enough with resin, resin, you can do things with resin that you can't really do with FDM. And in terms of like how you orient the part on the bed and the supports, you have a lot more control over support density and stuff than you do with FDM. And because it's just flashing a layer, you know, there's no movement. so. You don't have to worry about things falling over as much, although occasionally things just don't show up on the build plate once in a while. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is uh, all open right now, although I'm thinking about adding some some slots in between each one of these veins. I just kind of saw that this morning and thought, you know, that could be kind of cool. Because I have the same vent right now on the back of this helmet, and I really kind of want to distinguish this one more. So. I think I'm going to do that too. Do that tonight. Okay, got a quick question for you guys. So the classic Mando has a couple of holes up here in the viewer for some LEDs, which you know we're all familiar with those. Um, do we do something like that here? If I did, I would probably want to make them square, uh, not necessarily round. Um, you know, just to make them a little different. I mean, back in the '70s when. They made, uh, you know, the first Boba Fett stuff. The only LEDs you could get were the round ones, so that's what they used. Uh, but I think now they probably go with the square ones or the rectangular ones, if they could, or maybe even something completely different. Who knows? So let me know what you think. Round, square, or other? <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway... Just in case you missed it, back in the beginning I said that I started this helmet about two and a half years ago. It was uh, June of 2019 is when I started working on this. And uh, Maker Bake got really busy and I had to learn how to make a lot of stuff in a short amount of time by myself. Uh, and it was quite a challenge. So this thing kind of got worked on a little bit at a time over the course of the last couple of years. And I was really able to kind of jump on it uh, with a lot more vigor in the last year and uh, start pulling it together. So here it is, finally. I'm so excited that it's out and I'm thrilled that it's getting the response that it's getting because I really I really love this helmet and uh, you know, to see it being appreciated is, uh, is really cool. I really try hard to put a lot of quality into the stuff that I make, 
a lot of functionality a lot of flexibility and it takes me longer to make stuff than a lot of other people i mean gosh i don't know how some of these guys do it they have the model out the day after the show errors and you know i've gone and looked at some of those models and they're not quite right you know they look good from you know a certain distance but when you start scrutinizing them and you know turning them around and looking at all the angles and comparing them with what's on screen you're like oh they didn't get that angle right oh where did that thing go <laughs> you know <laughs> so but you know i've never really been about trying to make what's on the screen you know other people are already doing that i what i love about mandos is that there's so much room for variation inside the mando verse that why not make your own thing you know so that's what this is this is uh this was kind of born out of a you know uh, U.S. fighter pilot helmet, probably Navy, uh, mixed with a TIE pilot and, of course, the classic Mando helmet. So, if, if all of those things had a baby, then you'd get this. So, okay, so we have some questions. Oh, good. Cool. I was just going to ask, are there any questions? And comments. Yeah, so Benix said, uh, Benix Arden, don't do square, do triangles. It's unique. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love that idea. Thanks, yeah. Benick. And Johnny Ramsey said yes. LEDs in the rangefinder. Yeah, those are always. Yeah. Um, yes. What Arden said. Ditto. Options. Yes. Windows for. Not sure. G. Knuth eighty six. What. Your question is. Maybe you can type it again. What is the uh, what is what do they say? Windows for stop please could look cool. Neon outlines. Hmm. The work will definitely pay off. Very ex We're all excited for your stuff. Thank you, Mal DeLorean. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, this is just the first of several things that are coming out soon. I've got something else I'm going to be debuting hopefully in the next two weeks uh, that oh. I think you guys might be excited about. <laughs> yes. Okay, so G Knuth 86 windows for strip LEDs could allow for cool neon looks. Mm. Hmm. Windows okay. where? Oh, um, what in the in in this in the in the rangefinder viewer or in around the helmet? <laughs> Maybe on the shroud. Put some windows in it. Hmm. Hmm. That's a possibility. But that's something also, you know, this stuff, because it's so easy to remove, this is something, you know, that, you know, if you buy the helmet, you can customize it. You have a lot of flexibility in what you can do with it because there's there's room to do those things. And there's access to do those things, which, you know, is very hard to find on a lot of other helmets. Um, you know, but I'm sure we'll probably see those things soon. <laughs> like so many other things that I've made that suddenly just showed up on other people's helmets. That's cool, man. I'm cool with that. So, you know, it's good. We, we need to share and uh, get inspired by each other. And I've seen some amazing things out there. And I'm really proud to be part of this community and, uh, you know, making these things. It's it's really a blessing. So. Six millimeter Mandalorian is with us. Hey, what's up, six mil? He says, I feel a new airsoft bucket in my future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, oh, yeah, a lot more airsoft stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be talking about some of the things that you want to do. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> very, very excited. Yes, Airsoft in general. I'm, I'm really, uh, I've known about Airsoft for years, never really had the opportunity or the time to get into it, but I think I'm going to be changing that. So uh, I think there's, uh, there's people there that might have a need that uh, I'd like to fill. So, yeah. How about some more questions? What do we have, moderator? And, um, oh, I think he meant tracks for LED strip lights to oh. lay into. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. You know, a better option for something of this scale could be LED wire. Yes. That, um, that. And, not, and I'm not talking about EO wire. There's actually an LED I mean, wire. Yeah. Uh, check out the YouTube channel Tested. Uh, not Adam Savage, Savage, but his buddy. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. He just did a whole model kit with like neon signs and everything using this wire. And I think that stuff looks amazing. And it's very low power, low power consumption. That would probably work better than, than uh, light strips because the scale is smaller. But the intensity of the light 
is just as good. Oh, yeah. I don't know what this thing's supposed to be, but, you know, maybe you guys can tell me. Somebody needs to come up with a name for that, because I don't know what to call it. Can you guys come up with a name for this piece right here? We'll take the best one. Because <laughs> I, I can't come up with a name for it. I always come up with names for all these parts. And, uh, like, this is the RF cover. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, these things here, these are the side wings. Because they don't get, they get printed separately, and then you glue them on, which... I was thinking about attaching them to the helmet model, the, the base helmet model, but I kind of like the fact that you can you can see a gap there. It makes it feel like an accessory, which I don't know, personally I like that. You know, if it's your helmet then you'll have the option to go in and putty that, close that up and, and uh, you know, make it look all uniform. But that's, you know, that's why I do these this way so that, you know, options. Gotta have options. Love them. And Venix is also talking about uh, duct system for fans. There is room. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, well, yeah, check this out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Inside. There's lots of room for ducts in here. Okay. Now, remember, this is a prototype, so it doesn't have the, you know, all the finish work on the inside, the, the top piece that I always put in. But um, where this collar is, this is all hollow in here. So there's plenty of room for electrics, electronics, batteries, ducting for fans. And you can open these up and actually draw air right in through these if you wanted to. You can even draw air in through the rear vent because it's open. So, lots of good airflow options. Uh, where did the stand go? Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, ducting. Well, okay, that's something I'm definitely uh, going to put on the table. Uh, I'd like to start doing more of that. It'll probably come out as a separate, you know, kind of an aftermarket thing. So if you wanted to order a, a ducting set for this helmet, there'll be one available at some point in the near future. Uh, the other thing, this will probably be the first helmet that um, I offer with padding. So I'm going to uh, create a padding layout and find the best material that I want to use for the inside of this and uh, do some padding. King Kimosabi says, call it the crest cover, the piece on the back. Crest cover. Okay, I like that. That's uh, that's one. Anybody else got something? Mm, Maldvorian seconded the crest cover. Okay. And Yogo Junzo is with us. Hello, Yogo. How's the drop-down visor? Could one use a clear PC of plexiglass, cut the same size and shape, basically to put LED when you drop down the visor? Um, yes, in theory, yes you could. Uh, the only issue that you would run into is this. I mean, absolutely, yes, you could cut a visor that's the same general size as this. Uh, what I might do is maybe offer a couple of different flavors of this. Maybe do like a framework which you can backfill with um, you know, some transparent, you know, like dark glass, dark green, uh, this is polyethylene here, um, you know, something like that, something flexible, and then glue that in, and then you could backlight that or etch it, I've seen a lot of people etch the, the plastic to get it to light up, yes, um, the problem is, is that the way this is designed, it's got this frame up here that have these, uh, that have these ports that allow you to install it over the stem because the stem has to go in the stem and the axle have to go in when the ear base goes in because they are between the ear base and the helmet there just wasn't any room to put it up where the rangefinder was it was going to interfere with the rangefinder so I had to put it I had to put it back uh, inset it a little more and I think it works better there anyway but yeah I think that's possible We'll, uh, you know, if you guys keep these requests coming, um, we will definitely explore. I, I think there's going to be a lot of options available in the near future for this helmet, uh, especially if, you know, it's going to be as popular as I think it is. Then, yeah, we'll definitely be doing some aftermarket stuff for this. 
so stay tuned and i am trying really hard to start getting my electronics chops up so near future look for light kits and my dream and i know people have done this already but i want to do my own because the engineer in me says you need to become a better engineer figure out how to do it yourself so i want to do a servo driven or a stepper motor driven range finder with a wireless control so you can just touch your gauntlet and it goes up right now we've got the primitive hand operated system that includes the little stop up here at the top to keep it from flopping forward very exciting fred flintstone would approve <laughs> so anyway more questions what do we got crest cover okay i think it's going to be crest cover Uh, you could put a holdover visor like on a real spacesuit. <laughs> a holdover visor? Akina Helsing says that helmet looks amazing. Thank you, Athena. Akina. Akina, sorry. I know, hard to hear. It can be sometimes, yes. So. Oh, yeah. oh, thanks, Venix. I'll be in touch soon. I love and appreciate you too for all your amazing work and support of the work, amazing work of Mandos. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. Uh, Yogo has a new servo programmed. It's more of a space issue. Oh. Yeah, that's the hard part is finding things that uh, you know don't take up a lot of space. Um, you know, I've got some. I've been working on a couple of things. Really, kind of trying to explore the potential of magnets and I think I've kind of reached the limit of you know what you can do with them um, and I love them and I'll keep using them but um, I just discovered something else the other day is that you can buy uh, solenoids that are really really small um, and that coupled with some other mechanical devices of uh, that I'm going to basically keep under wraps right now until I build my first uh, 3D printed one uh, that coupled with one of those devices could uh, you could do a lot of cool things with that uh, like attach jetpacks automatically to your back plate without having to do straps so that's why I don't have a jetpack yet I have the models but I don't have the mounting system the mounting system has been cooking up here for over a year and uh, it's coming very soon but <laughs> it's been a challenge because a lot of this stuff that I make is born out of my own desires for what I want my stuff to be like. It's, you know, I could poop out jetpacks all day long if I wanted to, you know, and, and print them at point four and, you know, so they have really big lines and stuff and just, you know, send them all over the place. But I want to make something that you can go, wow, this is really cool. I don't have to do a whole ton of work to make it look awesome. And look, I can just put it, I can put it on by myself. You know, that's my goal is I want to be able to put my armor on by myself. I don't need no stinking droids to dress me, you know? <laughs> so, uh, Sorry, Boba. <laughs> King Kimosabi wants to know if there are any plans for a version without the blast shield. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, there is because I think there's a lot of features on this helmet that look really cool without the blast shield. And yes, there will be. Um, that's probably going to be an STL only. Um, I'm planning on getting a lot more helmets out as STL files here in the near future um, because I really want to start filling out that whole side. A lot of people are getting printers now and a lot of people are interested in, in stuff that they want and I want to make it for them that, so they can print it. So yeah, that's definitely something that's going to happen. And it was gold visor like on a spacesuit. That was oh. a typo. A gold visor. Like a yes. Spacesuit. Yes. I need to figure out how they make the clear gold visors. I don't know if they're doing some kind of transparent vinyl, uh, you know, like window tinting. I don't think that's it. They could be doing, um, you know, fusing metal onto the plastic. But uh, I haven't learned enough yet to be able to 
to do that, but that is something I would definitely like to do. And Kilted Kobold says, you came out with this at the exact right time. I was going back and forth between a Mando build or a TIE pilot, but this is the best of both. <laughs> awesome. That's Fame great. fighter pilot. Fame nice. fighter pilot. Very <laughs> nice. Yes, and I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it. I am going to be doing an environment box, a life support box for this helmet, this hose coupler, which can be put on either side, by the way. Both of these are attached with screws. Um, so you can reverse them if you don't want them to go a certain way. I just put the larger one where the hose gets attached. I put that on the left side. Um, but it's going to uh, work with a uh, buoyancy compensation device hose, a BCD hose. Um, and uh, I'm supposed to get one like any day. Right now I've got some dishwasher drainage hose that I got to kind of just see if it even fit. And it, it did. It fit perfectly. So, but... Um, yeah, so that's coming. So to be able to do the whole fighter pilot thing is going to be happening. Kilted Kobold says, get out of my brain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you, maybe you're in mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should get out of my brain. <laughs> uh, I love uh, it. I love it. You guys are great. Yoga says, I was looking at those last night. I'll wait for yours. <laughs> okay, cool. You're yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because I'm not doing, I want to do what I'm going to call a Mando version. And I know they did some for Star Wars Rebels. We've seen Mando pilots before in Star Wars Rebels, and I think they were in the uh, Clone Wars cartoon. But um, I want to do my own version. So it's going to be more, a little more interesting looking, kind of asymm asymm asymmetrical. That's the word I was looking for. Um, you know, I still have a lot of all the same features that, the ones we've seen before, the Rebels wearing and the TIE Pilots, it'll have all the same features, just a different configuration, different design. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's coming soon. It's already in development. It's just not not ready to show. So, And it's going to have plenty of room for lights and, and whatnot, batteries. So it could be a cool way of uh, storing batteries and other things uh, for your helmet and other parts of your armor, like your gauntlets. So... Don't be a Vader hater. Twenty seven says, "I've always wanted a Mando helmet with the blast shield, and the fact that the visor drops is absolutely <laughs> awesome. So excited!" <laughs> Thank you, man. Well, you know, my motto that I just came up with like a couple of days ago is simplify or justify. So I wanted this because I just love the way this looks. This whole like you know, this is one of the things I always loved. You know, military fighter pilot helmets especially ones from the 60s and 70s because they just have this cool thing going on with this. Um, and I wanted to have it there, and I know why it's there on a, on a real fighter pilot helmet, so I'm like, what can I put on there? And then I'm remembering, you know, the classic scene from A New Hope where Luke is fighting the remote, and then he grabs the, the Rebel fighter pilot helmet, and it's got that big opaque blast shield on it. And I thought, oh, a blast shield. So the first one was opaque. And it was more just to see, you know, is it going to even work? And it pretty much did. Needed a few tweaks. Then I thought, what if I put in some interesting, you know, slits into it so you could still see out of it. You could drop it down and you could see out of it. So that's what I did. And that's what we have. Let's see. There we go. So, yeah. And I'm probably going to do several variations on this design. Um, so that you can get you can get some glass into them, maybe get some EL wire into them, or some uh, some LED wire, uh, which would probably be better than the EL wire. I have EL, EL wire, and it's really not that bright. Um, the LED wire is super bright, looks awesome. So if you did some etching on some on a clear, you know, or a, at least a darkened uh, visor, a smoke colored visor, then you'd get all those those cool lines to show up with the uh, LED wire. So yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. But I wanted to get this thing out. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a laundry list of cool things I want to do for this, and you guys have hit on several of them already. So that's awesome. And they'll be coming. We're gonna we're gonna put a lot of focus on this helmet over the next couple of months and accessories for it and alternate versions of it even. So stay tuned. Shot in action fig says you should maybe connect with 
Imperial Arms official. He seems to have a cool concept for a jetpack. For a pilot? Pilot jetpack or, or a jetpack connection system? Uh, he's probably talking about a jetpack connection system, yes? Is that what we're talking about? Just says, have a cool concept for a jetpack. Yogo says, I was thinking etching in clear. All yes. I know is this bad boy is fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I've seen the etching. The backlit etching just looks amazing, and that would be perfect for this thing because, you know, I'm guessing it's got some kind of, you know, some kind of shield technology built into it that stops, like, gamma rays and, and other harmful radiation from going directly into your eyes and blinding you while in the middle of combat. So that's kind of was my thought behind it. You know, but also just something fun. Uh, one of my friends uh, saw the video that we put up the other day where I dropped it, and and they thought they they said, "Oh, interactive armor is always the best." So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's interactive. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway. King Kimosabi says, "Whenever you flip the visor down, I get the whole NCIS yeah meme in my head." <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, don't be a Vader hater. Twenty-seven. A pilot's jet packed. Eject mm. pack. Eject oh. pack. Ooh. Eject. Pilots oh, have to eject. Oh yeah. Ooh. That's a cool idea. That is a very cool idea. Okay, and you said somebody's working on one. So um, yeah, we'll see about maybe. No, it was a different them. person. Oh, a different person. Okay. This was an idea from. Don't be a Vader hater. Oh right. And it was shot in action figs that said that Imperial Arms official has a right. cool concept for a jetpack. Yeah, well, yeah, we have the jetpack. He's trying to figure out the attachment system. That might be what he's referring so to. That's what I, we're I'm going to have to go look at their site and see what they've got going on. And, and yeah, maybe uh, maybe there's a collab in the future. Who knows? So, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm shooting for, though, is a, is a jetpack you can put on by yourself. You know, I, th I think a warrior should be able to put on their own armor without attendance, you know, without people to help them. Uh, because you never know when you're going to have to suit up. I mean, and you got to take it off sometime. I mean, for Christ's sake, you have to bathe once in a while, right? <laughs> you know, we mandos are tough, but, you know, we want to stay clean. So, all right. Well, um, is there any other questions? I don't see anything. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it here, guys. But I just wanted to thank everyone for stopping by and, and uh, seeing what we got going on here. And uh, I'll probably be doing more of these in the future because this was pretty fun. Um, I'm also thinking about restarting my stream on Twitch. So I'll keep you guys posted on that because uh, there I would be talking about modeling for 3D printing um, and also 3D printing and occasionally playing some games. So, uh, looking forward to doing that again. So, a couple final comments before we wrap up. Yogo says, not to be pushy, but I would definitely buy your jetpack system. Thank you. King Kimosabi says, the helmet stays on during bath time! <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> and uh, Shot in Action Figs, uh, we're talking about the jetpack again. His look is harness-based, yeah, which is a bummer, and that's what we were trying to make better. But I'm sure some better fit will come to mind. Your stuff is already wizard. Thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, I, I appreciate the harness, and I think harnessing does need to come into play, but I would like to not see it unless it could be made cool and integrate with the armor. And Yogo says, yes, I agree. It would almost be impossible for me to suit myself. Six millimeter Mandalorian, great work, brother. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys, all the kind words you guys have said, and the really great insights and comments. And um, I'll look forward to talking to you all again soon. Maybe next time we'll be painting a helmet. Maybe this helmet. <laughs> yeah. So. Or no, actually, we're going to paint the, uh, the first prototype. I'm going to go ahead and buff that one out and get it all ready for paint and uh, this one is actually going to a friend a very very dear friend who's going to be helping me with some uh, new stuff coming up in the future a really fantastic designer who I've known for a very long time and uh, he's getting this one 
So. Oh, yeah, that, you guys are going to just, ooh, that's going to be some neat stuff. That's going to be fun collaboration. Yes, yes, it will. Lots of big things coming, guys. Yes. So stay tuned. And, um, you know, we're going to try to be uh, very prolific on the social media so you guys know what we're up to as often as possible. Okay? <laughs> All right. So without that, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. This is HK7335. Signing out, and thank you again, everybody. Super, super appreciated. Super, super grateful. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. <laughs>